Seattle. Waiting moments in the game. Not sure how much time is left. Seattle up 50, 48 over Boston Blacks. Getting close to the end. What a mountain Seattle has climbed. What a mountain. By the end of that second half, I think Tane and I were both resigned to the fact that this is done. And ultimately that's something that can't happen in rugby because just as bad as you want to win, the team that is down wants to win even more. We don't let up on anyone! This is going to end the same way so many of these other campaigns have done. For everybody at home, how would you describe rugby? That's a good opener. I've been here 27 years and this question has been asked to me numerous times. It's a mixture of sports, you know, it's, it's so, for me it's the ultimate challenge. Is it, it's a sport that requires an enormous level of skill and, and talent, um, and it's incredibly diverse. There it is. Nice. Yeah, thank you. If you imagined a sport that was the product of football and soccer having a baby, that would be what rugby is. I generally tell people it's kind of a combination of soccer and football, the, the way the sport's evolved a little bit, I mean, it's always going to be a part of football, American football, because football evolved from rugby, with the tackling, the contact, the, the running. It's sort of a hybrid of a lot of what of American sports are. Spatial awareness of a basketball player, and then you've got to kind of have the vision and the foot skills of a, of a soccer player. And then you've also got to have the, you know, the, 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 the close contact you know, wrestling skills of a wrestler. One of my old coaches used to call it an invasion game. So it's, you know, the principle is you're getting over a line and touching it down, and you're trying to stop the other team from doing that. Um, you're running straight, um, trying to get over that game line continually, and it's a continual game, so you're not stopping for downs and things like that, so. And then on top of all that, you've got to have this kind of killer instinct mentality. So it's, it's a great sport, and I think that's why it's so popular in the world. I think, um, the great thing about rugby is it suits all people, all sizes, all shapes. Um, there's a position for everyone, so. Positions for big, big, strong guys. You've got positions for little, small guys, fast guys, slow guys, you know, people with all sorts of different skill sets and different physical attributes, right? So the beautiful thing about it is that you've just got all of this diversity, not only in body types and ability levels and skill levels and particular skills, but Everybody has to be able to do a little bit of everything, right? You can't be a specialist in just one thing. And so what's rugby? It's an incredibly diverse game that if you're at any skill level, if you're at any physical ability, you can come play. And I think that's why people love it. Oh, I got a Division one, I can look at the uh, ball security to begin with and some attack shapes. Then we've got the mall. Tonight with Matt, a uh, lot of energy and let's real focus so we get a good session in, yeah? Yes, sir! Yes. 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 Keep on over here, let's go! Let's go, boys! Oh, work, work! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Mm, 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 mm. Oh, oh, oh. Three minutes at this. Okay, ready? And when did you become a part of Austin Black's Rugby Club? How long ago was it? Uh, be 10 years ago. Um, I came over here. The other, the, one of the coaches, uh, Zach Triplett, I played with him when I was younger. And um, I was playing in, in, in Europe at the time, and uh, he asked if I want to come over and just, uh, you know, uh, on my off season, just come in for a few months and play some rugby with the Blacks. And uh... so I grew up in Scotland. Um, I started playing when I was about seven years old. So pretty similar to Tani. Tani and I are actually uh, a year apart in the, from the same place in Scotland. So um, been playing it just over 30 years. I think last year was my 30th season. They wondered if I wanted to come back and stay as a, as, as a, a, a long term kind of deal with. And in which would include some coaching. And so, yeah, that's how it started. And then from there, after the first half season, I was promoted to head coach, and I've been the head coach ever since. So it's nine and a half years now. So I started playing rugby back in New Zealand when I was, you know, we used to play on a Saturday morning with no boots on, no shoes, just bare feet. So I've been playing my whole life. So initially, I came over here to play professionally, uh, Major League Rugby, with my wife and my kids. Um, we looked up Austin and we heard such great things about it that we wanted to move here. Um, I'm looking at things outside of, you know, outside of playing now, um, hence why now I'm sort of gone into some coaching as well. Um, so initially that's what interested me as, as well. Um, I spoke to Tane, you could hear the passion in his voice that he has for this club, which is uh, something that, you know, really excited me. And then once I got to meet all the, all the people involved here at Austin Blacks, all the players as well, you know, like you can see how it's such a, it's such a tight community. Um, such a great environment to, to be in um, every day that you, you get to be there. So, you know, no egos, everyone's there to work hard, everyone likes to have a good time. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a great place to be. I didn't realize that there was such a strong tie and bond within the Blacks team, the management, the alumni, or seniors, whatever you want to call them. You kind of just think you're joining a team and it's not really that, you're joining a family, you're joining a legacy. It's something that is just intense, it's overwhelming, and it's amazing to be a part of. You gotta go outside and then come inside. Yeah, that's normally how I'm going. The decision that can cause chaos. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Right. Set, go! Get back! 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 Let's get excited boys, because this is our more championship minutes. Let's go. Such wit. They're going to play on each side, each touch line ready to play the ball. They're keeping the ball alive, they're getting over the gain line. To the foot, and the slice almost got its way or worked its way around. What makes, what are some unique parts about this club that you may have not seen anywhere else? One of the things that I would say makes Austin really unique in terms of like any other club is what they're willing to do for their players. I think the Blacks really invest into what makes a player great both athletically and personally. I guess it's a bit different to professional teams because I'm mean, obviously you're getting paid but I think um, everyone at the club, all the guys that turn up, you know, they turn up for the enjoyment of the game, really genuine and um, I think the, the main thing that I did find with the Austin Blacks is just how really connected everyone is and everyone's such a tight group, you know, so um, if anyone ever needs any help moving house, if, if someone's looking for employment, anything like that, you know, the guys are, you know, they're always there to step up and, and they help each other out. So that was something that actually 
I was actually really surprised with. So one of the beautiful things about the Austin Rugby Club is that we have this culture around this home base that we have, that very other few other people do. And so you talk to other clubs all the time and you hear about the challenges that they're having with recruitment and keeping guys. And a lot of it's because they don't have a one place that they're going to, right? They're trying to rent soccer fields and go to a high school stadium and, and try and get practices in all over the place in gyms and different places. The Austin Rugby Club is so fortunate because we have this home base, right? These guys in 1969, 1970, you know, went out and bought this tract of land. It's useless for anything else. It's in the floodplain. You can't build anything on it. But, you know, these 24 guys or whoever it was, the original landowners that we have, they went out there and they acquired it. And then they cleared it all out by hand and, and built this amazing rugby facility that we have now. Boys, did you notice that when your attitudes are on, you boys are unstoppable. So let's make sure we get each other up, help each other out. Yeah? Let's always we... get excited. Froth at the mouth. Ready to kill someone. Sweet. Anyone else? We make, we make mistakes now in training so we can learn and be better for next week. Yep. Right? Let's be better. Five, five, five. Yeah. Yeah. That's something to do. You know, think about it. What is the main goal each year for the Austin Blacks rugby team? With the Austin Blacks, the goal every year is, to, is to, to win a national championship. The Austin Blacks rugby club is aiming to win the national championship in every division that we enter aside. Really for us, it's about setting that competitive standard from the beginning, from preseason, throughout the seasons, to achieve the goals that we want to reach at the end goals of championships. But it's really setting the foundation and the core structure of what we want to do and how we want to get there early and then building on that throughout the course of the season. As a club that we want to be is, we want to be known as the best rugby club in America, year in, year out, so. But to be honest, failure has been part of that because we've gone to six national championships prior to this one and lost. The Division One has always been the one. It was been, it's been pretty elusive for us for a little while. It, it's a little bit repetitive when you get to the, the pre-season meeting, right? And you're like, okay, the aims on the board. What are the aims on the board? The aims on the board are exactly what they were last year win every division. The, the club's evolved massively in 25 years from a club that was hoping to win a few games to a club that expects to compete for the national championship every year. Boys, when we yell at each other on the pitch, it needs to be a bit more accurate. It's not so much yelling or, 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 or putting you down, it's, it's to lift you up. So boys, let's just make sure when you are calling someone, talk to them when there's a breakdown, let them know what was wrong. Boys getting stuck in the ruck, some of us being lazy. Let's just keep picking each other up, let's have some fun. Yeah. When we call names, yeah sweet, I got you brother. I got you brother, let's go eh? Yeah. Just make sure we lift, forwards, let's keep having some more fun eh? Yeah. 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 Let's go. Everything gets faster, getting to the breakdown gets faster, getting set at set piece gets faster, it all just goes up a level, right? Let's, yeah, let's make go. that next leap, right? We've got three more sessions to get to there. Well, it's just, we need to get our mentality right now, that's it. All the physical stuff's been done, yeah? What, what does it mean, mentality? What we need to get right? It means that we're super competitive in everything. Like, the game's made up of all these little competitions, the set piece, the game line, the rock, kick battles. We've got to win all of them. Because that's our mentality. Makes sense? Yep. That is every little micro thing. It's a mentality, a mindset, and that's the Austin Blacks rugby. You understand? Yep. So we go up there, let's remember that. <laughs> OK, let's go. Blacks on me! One, two, three! Blacks! Give me two flags on the block! Woo! Give me the third! 
Why do you guys have team dinners on every Thursday night? Because we, we're there for that. So it's, it's what I was talking about, about the home base, right? It's about having this sort of melting pot of people who are coming and, and interacting in various different ways. Like, this is where you get all of the social benefits of rugby, right? Because you don't get a chance when you're out there on the training pitch to find out about a guy's new job or a new girlfriend or that his wife's pregnant or all these sorts of things, right? So that bonding experience that you have with everybody only happens after the games, after the training sessions, when you're on bus rides, when you're doing you know, four hour car trips to Dallas and things like this, right? That's when you get to experience all this stuff and dinners are a part of that, right? So someone's cooking, there's food all available for everybody. You can have a beer if you want to, but it's not required. And that's where we get to learn about each other. That's where we get to have these social bonds be you know, solidified because you can run a little bit faster if it's for the guy that you really know, right? And you can hit a little bit harder if it's to protect someone who you trust, right? So all those social connections are super important to creating a bond such that when you get out on the field, you're playing with your brothers, not just a bunch of guys you see twice a week. Let me just get drilled. Practice. 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 The first one, buddy. I warmed him up for you. <laughs> he gave him the air quick. Loosen the uh, mayonnaise jar. Yeah. Air ball. Air ball. Yeah, take one, take oh, one. good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ideal. Some of the challenges that a lot of people don't know are the fact that 90% of the team is battling injury. A lot of people see grown men just going, you know, 100 miles an hour and a lot of big collisions. But what people don't know is majority of us don't want to be on the pitch because we're in so much pain. But we choose to fight for our brothers who are next to us and push through that pain because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we were there for them. Rugby is a constant game. Once the ball's in play, it just continues to go until you know, someone knocks on, good, ball goes out, good, something good. like that. So it's a very physically demanding game. I can't get to a, to a level of fitness anymore where I can play balls to the wall for 80 minutes. So those, those last 20 minutes, it's just, it's just what do you have inside? What are you made of? You, you don't want to get off the ground. You made that tackle. You want to lay there. You want to rest. You want to take a breath. But you're not going to leave your brothers out there making tackles on their own. You just got to get up, make the next play. It's an amateur sport. Amateur sport means we're not getting compensated. Even in the professional rugby in the United States, there's, there's very little budget for professional rugby players at all. And so when you're an amateur rugby player, it has to be, become part of your lifestyle, right? So in order to be successful at a D1 level, it's not just training Tuesdays and Thursdays and sitting in traffic to make that happen and traveling to your games. It's also, you gotta be in the gym four times a week minimum. Ready, set, set, look! Yaman, yaman. More than that, for about half an hour running through all our attack and defense maps against each other, and that's it. We're gonna start off with a D3 kickoff. Let's go. What have been some of the major driving factors for this D1 team? So this was our seventh effort. I was involved in three previously, and this was my fourth. A couple of the other guys here who are on the D3 squad, who the D3 squad, excuse me, who've been successful, you know, they are previous D1 players who've, who've been in national championships. A, a lot of it was learning from those things and not carrying over the baggage from those events, right? I think in past years, we've carried baggage, especially in 2016, we carried the baggage of 2015 into that game. This year's different, not because we're fitter, not because we're tougher, but because we are going to do this mentally. We are not gonna crack like we have in previous years, right? We're here for each other, we're, we're on the right page. The team that wins on Saturday is the team that recovers mentally to a point where they're confident, where they can go out and play. So I think that was the most important thing for us this year. We can't just lollygag around. Take that straight line, get wide. That inside man's, I got you, I got you. Nothing more needs to be said. 
Like, we're ready, okay? We've done everything to death. We cannot, we know what we're gonna do, all right? Th this is it. This is the final four. We've all been there before, all right? So now it's on to you guys. My job is pretty much done. It's all on you to get your bodies right and your minds right. Come Saturday kickoff, it's on. One, two, three! Two, three. Circle up with the ones then. Hey, Katie. Yeah, everyone flies in different times today, so it'll be good to get everybody there and, um, you know, settled and in their rooms. And tomorrow morning when everybody's at breakfast, we'll start to get that excitement. You know, everyone's there and everyone's together and um, the day will go from there. Obviously, there's just Division 1 tomorrow, so there'll be a real, real focus on just the one team. Um, and then obviously on the Saturday with the D3, it's just the one team again, because Division 1 don't play till Sunday if they win Friday. So well, uh, the first two days will be a good build up because we'll just be able to have a real focus on each team. And then the Sunday is going to be quite chaotic because we've got hopefully got two games in, in, in the space of four or five hours. We just need to get on the field and, and get the ball in our hands and um, you know start playing rugby. So that's when we know that you know we've got a real special club because of our support and you know they'll they come along to our playoffs and and um, you know it makes us feel special and, and that's that's a big part of of, um, of success you know you know 100 150 people traveling all up just as part of the families and and, and some guy people have uh, players or people from all over the United States coming to watch you know families or relatives and so yeah really exciting weekend for the club and you know I just hope everybody gets what they deserve because we've worked very hard, you know, really hard this season. So. Oh, very excited, very excited to get to the hotel, relax, settle in, and then game day tomorrow. So just get going. I want the game soon, but gotta wait, gotta wait. All right, how, how are you feeling? I'm always good, bro. Always good. I can't complain. Good day at work, half day, so ready to go for tomorrow. Feeling fresh, legs are bad and nice wrist. Nice, easy week, so yeah, we're feeling good. <laughs> I've got, I've oh, got no, the face okay. for radio. <laughs> was that your hairstyle before this? Or no, this no, this is the first time I've tried this hair. Um, I think it made me at least 5% faster, so we'll see what happens. Well, to be honest, as far as coaching stuff goes, our job is pretty much done. You know, we put all the installs in for the offense and the defense, and um, just kind of ready to get this weekend started. So We do have the Austin Flex rugby team on here going over to the Nationals. It's only one step to finally free. team is at a place where like we're just ready to fuck shit up and that's that's point blank yeah Just gonna do a little kind of get the blood flowing a little bit and uh, just get our minds into processes. So we'll walk through well, everything that we're doing. Here we are. <laughs> okay, what's today about? Winning. Winning. Okay. Obviously. What else? Communication. As a group, as a club, what's the day about? You know, these every club and or every play, or everyone who watches rugby in the states normally watches these streams on. Like, you know, we played Life West 2016. We had like 20,000 people watching the stream. For me, today is about showing people what we've been doing all this time. Our brand, of rugby. Yeah, what we're about. You know, and what is that? What is our brand? It's aggression, intensity, accuracy. Yeah, tempo, high tempo putting them under pressure, dominating the set piece, dominating every aspect, just completely and utterly dominating the game. That's what today's about for us. 
You understand? Let's uh, let's get in our in our groove. Get our processes moving. He's going to the rock. Count numbers. Think. Get out of beds. Come on. Too late, late. Good. Uh, Storm here, exit, Storm exit, right hand side. Everyone sure how we want to start? Yep. Yeah? Fast, fast, fast. Impress them. Impre imp really put an impression on them straight away. We got it? Yeah. Sweet. Let's get it. Let's go, boys! Blacks on three, blacks on me! One, two, three, blacks! They've never played us. Let's introduce ourselves. Yes, sir. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna try and get us at the set piece. We're gonna fucking give them a block brick wall. Yeah. They're gonna try and get us by the old run uh, one off runners, we're gonna give them a brick wall. Come we're gonna give them nothing yes, to sir. get into this game. Yeah, we're gonna dominate. Come Let's go. Come on, Mindy. Oh, yeah. Blacks on three, blacks on me! One, two, three, blacks! And describe to us the national championship weekend of the semi-finals. <laughs> Everyone's locked in. Everyone was focusing on what they needed to do, getting treatment, stretching, and it was just, you just looked around and you're like, oh, it's about to go off. Let's wake up now. Come the guy and score that tight. Always can Hey, stay with your partner. We went into that game really confident. Um, we kind of felt that we were ready to go. First half, obviously, was you know we played exactly how we wanted to play. You know everything we trained for, we, we did it. The hard work's been done, the running's been done, the lifting's been done, all of those extra Saturdays that we've put in, and now's the time we go and get to enjoy ourselves, right? Let's put the mark on this game early, let's bury these guys. All together. Come on, come on, come on, boys. Three clips. Hey folks, welcome back. Seattle. Austin Blacks kickoff is just about to get going. And there's here. Man, the beginning of the game and the semifinals match, you saw it. We were out there and we wanted nothing but blood. We were playing to win and we were playing for keeps. All the way up until halftime, everyone was giving everything they got to make sure that we could separate ourselves from the team as much as possible. It's cleanly taken and pushed out to the scrum half, pushes it out to the winner. Breaks the tackle, runs in. Couple passes away, and Seattle is unable to collect that. Austin scores on the right side of the trail. Four of the initial score of the game. Come on, come on, come on. Wide left, wide open, number 11. Coming around, scores a try. Number 11, Mendy Carlton. Right side! Hey, right side! Hey, no, 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 no! no. Help him! Oh, 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 Get 
We were just so tuned in on Friday in the morning to come out there and play in the first half that we just blew Seattle out of the water and everybody thought, well, this is done, right? When we get on that edge, we've got to blitz. We've got to have that call. We've got to have that energy. We're taking a little bit too long, a little bit labored to connect on that edge and come up. We've got to have that same intensity because we're not connecting them early enough. Now, as we get through our phases, you see there's a couple little lazy cleaners now and they're starting to get their hands on there. Okay, it wasn't like it was in the first 20 minutes. Okay, we gotta get that energy back now. Okay, lots of people, and I'm sick of hearing it, will say, oh, it's nil, no, nil, no, it's nil, no, nil. No. We don't need to create a fucking false reality to motivate ourselves. No, we got a foot on the throat now, and we finish this job. Second half, I think that we just got a little bit conservative. We were already focused on the next race and we took our foot off of the gas. And ultimately that's something that can't happen in rugby because just as bad as you want to win, the team that is down wants to win even more. It was that mentally the whole group thought this is over, right? So we just stopped playing rugby and that was it, right? If you stop playing rugby for any period of time, the other team's going to get the ball and they're going to score it. So, that was, again, what we were trying to explain, right? Like, we had this great half, we had this awesome 10 minutes after halftime, and then emotionally and mentally, everyone just went to sleep. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, the tide turned. Yeah, they got an intercept, I believe, and then they had a charge down, and then they, we had some mistakes, and uh, it was one thing after the next, and all of a sudden, we were 50 to 48 down with 81 minutes on the clock. By the end of that second half, I think Tane and I were both resigned to the fact that this is done. This is gonna end the same way so many of these other campaigns have done. And so I think we just, as a team and as a collective, we just kind of got complacent and that complacency bit us in the butt. Seattle 
tell us the final moments of that last play because you kicked the ball off. What was going through your head and what players were you looking at almost talking to them through head to head? Restart. Collected by Austin on the restart. On the pass. And it will try. What a turn of effect. I got you. I got you. <laughs> yeah, gotta catch them all. That's how we do it in North Carolina, baby. Austin, Texas, ATX, we out here. It was the last play of the game. We know we needed the ball back. We needed to score points. We did score a try. So um, I just looked over to the left, um, you know, got the nod from a few players that were going to be up there to contest for the ball. Um, and yeah, and we just managed to somehow get it back. A bit of uh, individual brilliance. Uh, and then, you know, the boys finished it off. So in all my years playing rugby, that was probably one of the craziest, craziest games I've ever been involved with. So It was literally like lightning. Brennan catches the ball, he gets a, past a couple of defenders, passes it to Mende, and Mende just does what he does and just shakes a couple guys and gets into the try line. And when I tell you, no one could believe what just happened, we were all waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, we knew that this was too good to be true. Okay, let's look at ourselves. Yeah, we're 35, 40 points up at half time. Okay, that shit went and just happened, it does never happen again. We let go of a game like that. Yeah, we made some errors. Yeah, they got little things here and there. But that is not an Austin Black. Not under our watch. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sunday, different attitude. We do 80 minutes. We don't let up on anyone. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, break it down real quick. Yeah, break, it down. Hey, break it down right here, right here. Hey. It ain't gonna happen again, but way to get the win, boys. Blacks on three, blacks on me. One, two, three. Blacks! Nobody uh, talking, hey, nobody talking, bro. Y'all are fighting, y'all are fighting, but no, this shit, man. It's always love, bro. What's your name? Maya Oso. Maya? Maya Oso? Maya. Maya? Yeah. Minday, bro. Minday? Yeah. Hey, bro, best of luck at championship, yeah? Oh, yeah. We were down. We, we knew Kurt was going to give us a good ball. I thought I was going to be wide. I thought I was going to get it, but it went short. Curl was right there, and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to be in support. He made a crazy play, got the offload, and I just had to put it away. So I'm just happy. I'm just happy we won, honestly. And that was one of the <laughs> most intense games I've ever played. In that my was life. the craziest game I've ever fucking witnessed. Like that mixed, was, mixed that was emotions, insanity. just up and down. I mean, yeah, up in the yeah. in the in the first half, like 35 points to eight, something crazy like that. And then to come back last five minutes of the game, and we're basically down. And last just a, minute of the game. Last minute of the game, and we get a kick like that is just phenomenal. Just shows the bond we have as a team, and I think it's just excellent. And we pulled it out. We never pulled it, but we finally pulled it. After the game, what happened? Because with a performance like that, the result is all that matters. But how did you feel after the game? With the well, team? I mean, obviously after the game, there was no, there was no big smiles. We were all, and I think there's, I think we were there. Uh, we were very angry with what we, what we put ourselves through. You know, we should never have got to that. And so the obviously we had a meeting that night to digest everything and discuss. Uh, solutions. We've earned the right to be in the national championship. Okay, we earned that right through an amazing first half of rugby. Yeah, we played the best rugby this club's probably played since I've started coaching here. In the future, if a team starts to claw in a game, what must we do to make sure that we don't allow this snowball effect which happened today? Back to the basics. What is the basics? It's catch, carry, clean. Catch, carry, clean, keep the ball. No stupid tips or <clears throat> things that are gonna potentially go wrong. Focus on the set piece. Get the line out right. Hold the scrum. 
all the things that give us a backbone in a game of rugby. And we lost our backbone today. We, you know, started messing up. We started making mistakes. It's a collective thing. It is absolutely critical that we get away from this headspace where we take this all on our own shoulders and we bury ourselves emotionally as individuals and then we can't get back up in two days. Don't become someone who's going to pressure themselves into a point where they're not going to be able to perform in two days, right? Because we need good performances out of every single individual in order to perform well as a squad. Wake up tomorrow gear, on Sunday gear, chest suit, shoulders back, let's do what we say we're going to do. Understand? Man hits him up front, that second man is up top, up top, up top. Break away, break away, break away, break away. From here on to the final whistle, nothing matters but in this circle. We created this team for one specific purpose, and that's this weekend. Let's go on days, let's do a half lap, let's get a... Let's go, boys! 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 80 minutes. Everything you have, empty the gas tank today, because without today, there is no tomorrow. One, two, three! Boys! Before the game, you know, we're a confident bunch, obviously having two titles. Uh, already and we just beat the defending national champions in Palm Beach so we were confident going in Didn't know if Evan was going to make that kick from the sideline, so I was looking around at the guys being like, all right, you guys ready to go another 20 minutes? A real good moment for Evan, he just slotted it through, so it was, it was a good show and I was happy that we didn't have to go anymore that day. I don't think I have a heart left until uh, tomorrow. Next job, two big games. Final four, that's kind of how you want it, right? Good excitement. I'm sure your cameramen are enjoying all the drama. Thanks for the story. You guys had a lot of support in person, not just people watching from home, but in person on the sideline, being the loudest cheer section ever, and you even had your own family out there as well. Tell us what's that like, bringing the support and the people wanting to be there to be physically present with you guys. It's important for the club as a whole that we're more than just the players. That, that, that's one of the, the greatest parts, I think, about our club. You talked about some of the things that delineate us between other clubs. I think our supporters were just amazing. You saw how many 
Austin Black supporters turned up in St. Louis. That's not like driving down to Houston or Dallas where it was a couple of years ago. That's everyone making a conscious effort to fly to St. Louis, get a hotel, spend money and stay and support our team. And that speaks volumes. I mean, we probably had 100 supporters there with two squads of you know, 28, 56 players. We probably had probably 200 supporters, including players there. I was lucky enough to travel up with my wife and kids. Um, they came up with me, which you know, meant the world to me. And then when you step on the field and you see uh, all the support on the sidelines, you know, some people that haven't played a game in a very long time, people have driven you know, 12 plus hours to be there to support us. You know, it's, it's a massive lift for the boys and you know, that's something that we can't thank them for enough. For them to come and continue to come year after year and turn up at the games and you know, take care of kids while we, we go to training and you know, book the flights for us and organise the Airbnbs and make sure we've got all of the things that, that make the, you know, the rugby player run, um, you, know, you, just, you just can't say thank you enough. I, I know I don't say it enough. I hope everybody else says it enough to their significant others and their kids because they, they just give us so much by allowing us to do this. And I don't think they could, they could do it in any other way, right? There, there, there just is this thing that we have to do and we're, it's part of, like I said, our lifestyle. Um, and we feel this urge to do it and, and they're incredibly generous with their time, effort, money, everything they do to allow us to do it. Um, so, you know, I, I hope I get a chance to at some point thank everybody um, who does that for us because it, it's just wonderful. Again, I can't speak for other clubs, but I know the old Blues didn't have that there and I know Seattle didn't have that there and, you know, I know Chicago Griffins didn't have that there. And we all started on the same equal playing field and you know what? I think our supporters were probably a big tipping point, which could have been a point of difference. They've been in this with us. And you know, it costs money. We get beat up. It takes time. That's a lot of sacrifice for everyone involved. And so it's just important that they enjoy the moment as we do, because it's a sacrifice across all, all parts. I'll keep on this yeah. side. You get that side. How about that? No speech. It's awesome to be here, guys. Such a rare thing. Like for two teams, we've made it twice as far. This is the one we're fucking gonna close out big time. But just what an honor and a blessing to be able to play with you guys and have the club here in this type of event, right? It's such a rarity. And just yeah, I'm really count my blessings, guy. But we really got them out today. So thank you guys. Every year I've been here, I've watched all the national championships on the streams and. Um, this year there's a bit more excitement around the national championship for some reason. I think it's because of our supporters. You know, you look at the videos online and all the, all the emotion and everyone's so passionate about what we're doing. And I think being here tonight, you know, I'm really proud to be part of this rugby club. It's really special. So thank you.
beat now because they scored that try and they're, and they're starting to hiss. We've got to shut that down quickly. One play, get up. One play, get up. As I always like to say, um, you can't pay you can't pay for victory beers. They have to be earned. So when that whistle goes, that feeling once you can't find that anywhere else. Men's Division Three National Championship, one of the best tournaments of the weekend. I gotta say, yesterday's scores were so tight. You guys put on a great show. Put on another great show today. So thank you, thank you, and well played and well done. Colorado Springs. National champion, championship, championship, most valuable player. We've got number seven. Yes. 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 Now here it is. After a long season, long tournament, the champions, men's G3, the Austin Blacks. Austin Blacks, I love everyone. <laughs> You can only earn it, and it only happens that one time. And the next year is different, the next year is different, but, but those emotions and those feelings. And for the D3, uh, I was out for the championship game. Uh, I played all, every game all year. And watching all my brothers out there make tackle after tackle after tackle and they just kept coming and they just kept getting up and they just kept tackling them and I was, I was just I was in tears just what I was so proud so proud of them I mean just the effort everybody was on fumes two games in two days I just couldn't have been more proud I don't know I can't say enough I'm, I'm just a bit, a bit overwhelmed with joy from all the guys like all the hard work we put in the you know this stuff starts in October all the preseason fitness and everything like that. There's a lot of stuff off the scenes nobody actually gets to see. You know, guys working with injuries and stuff like that. And I mean, we built this team for one purpose, and that was this afternoon for that feeling right there. And uh, we achieved it. So when you can achieve your goals like that, it's, there's no greater feeling. It's awesome. It's fantastic. Fucking this is a day, you know. Obviously, you know, you gotta accept that there's pressure in the final, but we walk towards the pressure, right? We accept it. We're fucking confident in our preparation, that's what's gonna get us over the line, okay? Everything they're gonna fire at us, fuck, we're ready for it. Those trainings on Thursdays and Saturdays, this is for today. We're backing up again, right? We're fresh, we're ready to go. These guys, they don't know, they don't think they should be here. They're just turning up, man. So it's all on us about what we do today, alright? So you empty the fucking tank. You get out there and you put everything on the line. And we blow these guys out of the water just like we blew the guys out yesterday or Friday, right? And then we finish it off, yeah. Yeah. right? Because yep. we don't take the foot off the throat, right? Yep. We keep the ball, we run the ball. If we get into trouble at any point, we carry, we ruck, we kick. We carry, we ruck, we kick, and then we have a big defensive line. Now it's just a matter of being there mentally, getting on the field, trusting your mates, and going about this the right way. All right. Yep. We all here. We all here mentally for this game. Yep. Yeah. Let's go do this thing. Let's do it. Let's, get it. Let's fucking do it. Pick each other up. Fucking last time we had fun together, eh, boys? Yeah. 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 yeah, man. yeah. yeah. Let's do Don't it. make a mistake. Just work harder. Yep. Let's, work let's, harder. Let's, it's a part of the game, baby. Job. Last time with this crew. Let's next job. Let's represent ourselves well today. Yeah. Yep. 
the 80 minutes. Yep. That's you know, who are we? Fucking yeah, we're a team that's got passion. We've got emotion. Let's let emotion drive us, but not let it control us. Yeah. Yep. Discipline, energy, and a love for the game. Let's play with that spirit today. It's the last time we all play together this season. Let's fucking empty the tank and let's finish the job. Be better. Three claps. Yeah. In the beginning of the final game too as well, what we saw in your guys' pre-warm-up, it was very intense. Almost you could slice the atmosphere with a knife. Everybody was quiet, everybody was zoned in. Is this something that was different with the team before the final game? Something going on that was quite quiet and uh, creating, but you know, it's a national championship final. You expect guys to be nervous. Um, the way to get rid of nerves, and we spoke about this, is to make sure that you work hard and you flush it out of your system. It's like getting rid of lactic acid. There was that sort of calm, sort of confidence, but you could still feel the intensity, which was, which is a great feeling to have when you're in a, in a team like that, in a team environment like that. So, um, you know, obviously as one of the leaders, you know, we do a lot of the talking and, um, you know, you could see the focus in the boys' eyes and you could see that they're really dialed in. So I think that's one thing for our team, you know, if, if, if we're dialed in, um, we're a pretty good team, you know. Let's go win a national championship. Yes, sir. Blacks on three, blacks on me! One, two, three! Blacks! Two, two, blacks, two, blacks! Woo! Everyone was locked in. Everyone knew that if we were going to come out national champions, it started with them. No one was really even like sitting next to each other because every single person was taking this match personally and knew that they were about to go to war. Okay, last thing for me before I disappear, there's going to be times in this game and you've made three tackles in the space of 30 seconds and there's a voice in your head saying you can't do any more. That's when you fucking get up and you do more. Because that's what it's going to take to win national championships. And that's why we haven't won one yet. Because we haven't had that killing instinct at the end to do it. Today we do. Are you prepared to do what it takes? Are you prepared to make that extra hit? Are you prepared to run a bit harder? Are you prepared to go a bit further? That's what you need to be. Every single one of us has to be prepared to do what it takes to win this game. Deep breaths on Craig, get your heads together, and let's do the next thing. First thing is take this kickoff, do an exit, get the ball down there, put pressure on their line out, right? And then we do that again, and then we do it again. We all set for that? Yep. Yep. Fucking go. Let's go. Go. Let's go. Go time. Let's do it, boys. Come on. Come on. Blacks on three, blacks on me. One, two, three. Blacks. It was just two teams trying to oppose their will on each other. They scored first. That, I think, was the fire that we needed to be like, we've either got to nut up or shut up. Gave up an error and we got scored on straight away. And we had planned for that exact moment. Oh, yes. They're not coming back and we have to It's a national championship final, we've got 40 minutes. We're ruthless, absolutely ruthless now. Execution, execution, playing their heart. Let's line out in that scrums, let's go do this thing. And like we just had every single thing covered, right? And so we were just so tuned into that experience that nothing was going to get past us.
final whistle blew, when the game was done, how did it feel? Because you guys knew you guys had to win. How did it feel once that final whistle blew, when the game ended, the feelings that came over you? Lasted. You outlasted the pain, you outlasted the doubts, you outlasted the other team trying to oppose their will on you. It was more of, it was relief. I knew that we had finally reached the end of a journey that was very difficult and very taxing on our bodies, on our relationships, on our minds. And so it was just, it was, it was relief. So there's still a lot of anxiety about going into the game and I thought emotionally, I'm like, we're going to win this and at the end it's just going to be relief, right? I'm just, I'm just going to feel like finally it's done. Finally, seven goes, four for myself, 56 years, whatever it is, it's over, right? But it wasn't like that at all. It was just joy. It was just pure, pure joy and, uh, and just standing there in the middle of the field and having, you know, your teammates come around you and then being able to see the family and hold the cup. and. You know, you're exhausted, but, and, and that was the thing that really struck me about the whole thing, right? I, I, I thought for years that I would just be relieved, but I was just so joyous about it. This has been a goal since we lost our first final in 2002. And then for D1, it was just, finally. <laughs> just, that's it, finally. That's a perfect word. <laughs> Three cheers for the Austin Blacks! Division one men, old blue of New York. Big hand, big hand. Valuable player, men's division one national championship, number 14, Amir Lancaster. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and here's what it all comes down to. All the hard work, the sweat, everything else. 2023 D1 National Men's Champion, Austin Blacks. Thanks everybody. We've got a lot of people to thank. Uh, players, not for, not for anything, but coaches as well, obviously, and everyone who's here. But the big thank you is to the guy upstairs, the one who we did this all for for the last 50 years, Alan Sharpley. Wherever you are, Alan, Wherever you're watching from, this one's for you, mate. You know, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to, um, to win two trophies, this uh, two national championships, and uh, you know, kind of relief to begin with. But then, obviously, it's something we've been doing for, or trying to achieve for so long that you know, uh, the emotions kind of get to you because it's been a 10-year quest to do this, to be the first club to win two national championships. And uh, yeah, we'll celebrate it tonight, and we'll try and win three next year for all three divisions. So yeah. Congratulations, coach. Thank you. Man, we've worked so hard for this. Uh, 
We had this goal for years and uh, we finally made it come true. So nobody's ever won two divisions in the uh, same year with the same club, so I don't know, I'm just overcome. I, can't, I don't have anything. Yeah, I didn't Dude, I, I, I feel bad that Alan's not here to watch, but I feel amazing, right? Like, the club has been here doing this and has been the best club in the country for 50 years. And we've proved it today, we've proved it with D3. We've been here the whole time. Four years ago, we were the only club to win three teams through to the, uh, the regional championships. We did it again a year, year later. Like, it's just the best group of guys. It's just the best group of guys. We got the staying power. You can see it right across the club, right? You can see it because we got guys who start in D3 and they get better and better and better and now they're D1 starters. And we've got guys who start as D1 starters and they get a little bit older and they keep going and they keep going and they keep going and then they're winning D3 national championships. It just doesn't stop. Right, and, and next year we'll lose 25 guys and we'll bring in 25 more and we won't miss a beat because that's what we do. We just churn out, churn out winning rugby players. A lot of people are dedicated to rugby. I have never come across in the four rugby clubs that I've played with in the almost 30 years that I've done it for, I've never come across anyone who was more committed to his rugby club than Alan Sharpley. We wouldn't be where we are without Alan Sharpley. When I, when I spoke earlier about standing on the backs of the ones that came before us, he wasn't a very large man, but he had big shoulders. And uh, I mean, he's the one that taught me what truly loving rugby is all about because I was young, couldn't afford things. He bought me a plane ticket to my first playoff game because I didn't have any money um, and just showed, and, didn't ask for anything from me, just just give everything I had, you know? And like, that's when I really knew, I was like, this is just something different. Like, where else do you do you find that? You know, we're not professionals, so where does just some, I mean, it was, it was sort of a stranger. It was my first year on the club, and he just bought my ticket and said, just go play well. And we became great friends after that, obviously, um, you know, for years and years after that. But just that one moment, I just remember, I was just like, this is, this is what makes this special. This, this guy just gives everything, just gives everything he's got. And uh, just, I know he watched this from wherever he's at, this championship, and man, I wish he could have seen this because he would have been the most proud. The, the only thing that could have made it better was him being there. Really, it really is. The only thing that could have made it better. Um, it, it was wonderful that it happened, you know, that D1 was able to win in a year that D3 won as well and that we can finally put the stamp on it and be like, no, 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 we're not the best team, right? We're not the best, we're, we're not the best D2 team, we're not the best you know, group of athletes or whatever it is. We are the best organization. And that's what Alan would have really treasured, more than the D1 you know, going out there and finally getting the monkey off the back in the seventh go, right? The thing that would have made Alan just so thrilled and so proud would have been that there was two teams at the same time that did it. Alan, Alan and Anne, his wife have been a huge impact for the whole time I've been here and it, it, I'm sure you've had different answers but his, his impact on the Austin Blacks is undeniable and it, it wasn't forgotten as you can see on the jerseys we had his initials on the sleeve it's been it's been over a year since he passed away after a long battle with cancer but again cannot cannot speak highly enough but you know I, I all I could think about was was how Alan wasn't there and, and didn't get to see it and it would have been lovely if he was so uh, where, wherever he is, I, I hope he saw it. To wrap it all up, is there anything else you'd like to share about the sport of rugby, of why it's so special, or even just anything else as a person, as a human? Just how much I love this club, this badge. It's what it means to me. What I know it means to the other guys that are out there. Once again, you, can, you can't pay for it. You can only earn it, you can only go out there, spend the hours, spend the time, suffer to achieve the greatness. And when you achieve it together, just, it's priceless.
But, uh... <laughs> Talk a lot about the culture of the team, huh? No, they're just child children. This year was a, a historic year for the club. It was a historic year for USA Rugby. No one's done yeah. one and three divisions. But last time I checked, there were three divisions in USA Rugby. And unless we get all three next year, it won't be a success. So everyone comes back next year. Let's get it back. Let's go. Move. Move. Give me two claps for the blacks.